Welcome to this video on how TCP works. I'm Chris Career with Packet Pioneer, and today I'm going to talk about TCP acknowledgement numbers. Now, in a previous video, we talked about the sequence numbers and how those work. But specific on this video, we're going to focus in on those ACK numbers. So I'm going to take a look at this TCP connection. And just to kick us off here, I'm going to come down to packet 4. This is the first packet that actually has data in it in this connection. So here the client is sending to the server 445 bytes. As we saw in the last video, we can see that the starting sequence number is 1. The next expected sequence number that this client will start on is 446. Now, that number is good for me to know. In fact, in the opposite direction, if I take a look at the acknowledgement coming back from the server, and this is where we can see the ACK, uh, this is an acknowledgement that ACK flag is checked. There's nothing in this packet. This is just what we call a, a basic TCP acknowledgement. But if I come down to the ACK number, the client, or I'm sorry, the server is saying, hey, I received your packet. We're at 446. We agree. I'm good up until that byte of data. All right, so after this, the server, it sends its data. So this is actually the response from the server. We can see for this first packet, it's starting off at the sequence number 1. It's incrementing 329 bytes. The next starting sequence number will be 330. It maintains that ACK number because it's letting the client know, OK, I'm, I'm good up till 446 given the data that you sent me previously. Now the next packet from the server, this is a full-size packet, 460 bytes is encapsulated. The starting sequence number is 330. The next expected is 1790. Again, we see that acknowledgement number of 446. Now that number hasn't changed because we haven't seen any new data coming in from the client to acknowledge. That data was sent. It's already been acknowledged. That's why we repeat that acknowledgement number. There's nothing new to acknowledge. Now the client receives those packets. Now it comes down and it says to the server, acknowledgement number 1790. And if we recall, that was the next expected sequence number with that second packet. That tells us the client received both of these packets and it is good up to that byte of data, up to that, that uh, sequence number. Now a visual feature of Wireshark that's nice and handy to understand is when I'm looking at an acknowledgement packet, I can see which packet above is being acknowledged by this acknowledgement. So coming up over here into the top left, we can see this little check mark, or this check, check uh, icon here. So this shows me that packet 8 is acknowledging packet 7. So I'm good up to packet 7, and no need to retransmit any data from that server. So this is the basic mechanism of how acknowledgement numbers work. Basically, they take the data that was sent from the the server, we add that to the starting sequence number, and then that now becomes our acknowledgement number. Now for me, I have some TCP profiles in here. Uh, I can switch over to my TCP advanced profile, and you can see how acknowledgement numbers can be a nice thing to add to our columns, especially we're doing sequence and acknowledgement number analysis. Uh, but for overall, just basic TCP analysis, sometimes that's a little overkill for me. That's why I have TCP plain where I don't see those values. It really just depends on what I'm troubleshooting. Now in a future video, what we're going to take a look at is another aspect of the acknowledgement numbers, and that is TCP dupe acts. We're going to take a look at those, and we're also going to take a look at selective acknowledgements. So those are different kind of acknowledgements in TCP. We'll make sure to uh, describe those for you in a future video. So I hope this video was useful for you in understanding TCP acknowledgement numbers, and we'll see you next time.